All right, we are recording. It is Thursday, June 27th, 9 p.m. Central. Appreciate you all jumping on for Power Hour. Uh, if somebody happens to be on Messenger and wants to uh, send a reminder, uh, we greatly appreciate that and toss that link if it hasn't scrolled too far. And then uh, we'll grab a couple more people. And for everybody watching the replay later, good to see you all too. All right, so what I want to do tonight is I put it out there. I wanted to get um, I wanted to get some questions in. I want people to be able to. Oh, Stephanie, no problem. I was just saying hi. It was good to see you. Come back and join us again. Um, what I want to do is open this up for some questions. Anybody stuck with any of the parts of the system? We have the four boxes across the top. I want to keep writing this on and sharing this so that. Everybody keeps seeing it and they get more and more familiar with it because I know it's in my head because it kind of came out of my head and a bunch of other people's, but I want to make sure everybody understands our process. I want to make sure you don't just understand it theoretically. I want to make sure you're understanding it experientially, actually doing it. All right, so we got vehicle. And then we've got internal resources. And we've got external. All right, so let's start off. I'm going to ask some questions. First off, does anybody have any specific questions they want to ask about any part of the process? Any part of, hey, Casey, this just, I'm struggling on this part. I just don't get this. Or, hey, I get the theoretical of it, but I tried this and I ran into this problem. That's what I want. I want this to be interactive. I want to be able to take some questions from the crowd. Uh, I obviously have plenty I can talk about, but I'd rather make this about what you are dealing with. So anybody want to ask any questions, share uh, any experiences, share any examples? Hey, Casey, I did this. This is what happened. Would you have done it any different? It's wide open. It's open mic night. Casey, uh, Eddie here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Sorry, I had a mouthful of water. Okay. <laughs> and I just, um, I hadn't faced this yet, but it's, it's the most terrifying part. Uh, once we establish their desire and they confirm the vehicle, and we actually go through uh, the five steps, um, it's that last one, that external resources that has, has me wondering what's, what's going to be the best approach when a person says the most common um, thing that you hear, time. I don't. How bad do uh, we delve into that to, to, to make them see that there's more time? Do we, how do we use the numbers or so? Very good, very good, very good question. So uh, just to reiterate the question, make sure I got it and make sure everybody understands uh, what I'm getting ready to answer is, the question is, what do you do when you're going through these steps and it's, and it's, you've identified desire, you've identified that Kayani's a good vehicle for them, they understand that there's a process and then they get over here and they start having some issues. They start thinking that, well, because again, let me frame this up. If you're going on a trip, you got to know where you're going. We're going to go to Miami. You got to have a vehicle. What do we got? We've got the station wagon because everybody drives station wagons these days or whatever. <laughs> do you know how to drive the station wagon? I've got my driver's license. The state of Texas says, I know how to drive. All right. So they understand that they want to do something. They understand that Kayani is a good vehicle to help them get those things they desire. They understand that there is a process that we have. It's a simple five-step process. They've got that check off. Okay, that makes sense. And then they start hitting you on the external resources. So what are some examples? And I want y'all, and, and, and uh, I'd like people that are not my shooters, while I love you guys, I want my non-shooters, and you'll know if you are or not, I want you to tell me what are some examples of resources. Eddie gave us one. Just unmute and tell me or type it in the chat session. What are some resources that people need to do anything 
this business specifically, going to Miami, whatever. What are some things that they need? Money. Money. That's a very good one. What else do they need? Fuel. Fuel. Yep. Good one. Anybody else? Oh, we got some chats. I missed it over there. Money, Tom, absolutely. All right, here's a couple of others. Spousal or significant other support. What do you mean by that? Honey, you want to go to Miami? Nope, you do not have spousal support. <laughs> Honey, I want to start a new business. Nope, you do not have spousal support. Food, you do need food. If you're going on a trip, you're going to need some snacks, especially if you have kids. You're going to need sustenance. You're going to need stuff, right? So when we're using this for Kayani, Kayani is the vehicle. What's your desire? You got all sorts of desires. Maybe financial freedom. Let's, there's a thousand of them, let's just use that one. Do you know how to do this process? Absolutely, I've attended all of Casey's trainings. I ask questions if I don't understand them. I know exactly what he means by waving. I know what he means by saying hi. I know what he means by forming. I know what he means by empathize, get permission and peek. And I understand what he means by passing the ball. All right. So you got financial freedom. Yep. I got a desire. I got a vehicle. Kind is amazing. I have a system. Very cool. What are the things I got to have? Time can be one of them. That's shared. Money. Support. I don't know that you need food specifically to make the Kayani vehicle run. But you do need things like food. You need sustenance. You need... You need to know that, you know, uh, that, that, and, 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 and your desire will be part of what that fuel is. Okay. So desire is a very, very important thing and you got to have enough desire, but desire is a very special one. And that's why we call it out by itself. So Eddie asked, what happens when I run into somebody that says they don't have time? Let me use a perfect example today of an encounter I had with a chiropractic doctor. She just opened her own practice. She works at two other doctor's offices. So that means she has three offices that she's servicing. Do you think this lady's busy? She has four kids, married, all the great parts that go into that. She's probably busy, right? So she doesn't think she has time. Here's why it is so important for this system to be followed because if you sit there and you've explained all this stuff to them for the last three hours and 47 minutes, guess what they think they have to do? When you tell them, well, this doesn't require a bunch of time, they're looking at you going, you just spent three hours and 47 minutes explaining this to me. What the hell do you mean it doesn't take time? Of course it takes time. I'm out. She's like being on a shark tank. For that reason, I'm out. So if you, if you sit there and you have to be the guy that has all the answers, then they're going to think that they have to be the guy that has all the answers. So the reason that this little fella right here is so important for passing the ball is that you have a perfect opportunity if you do it right. So the doctor that I'm talking to today because it was executed perfectly by Miss Sherry Passmore, she identified her desire. She was at the, at the doctor's office getting adjusted. She found out that she's hungry. And so what did she do? She waved, she said hi, she formed, she found out that she was wanting to make money. Hey doc, I know how it feels for that. I understand and you're real busy and you got a lot of stuff going on. Hey, would you have any interest though if there was a different way of a system that would allow you to be able to get past this, would you be interested in learning more about it? Ask permission, yes I would. Now they're Pete, who do you have? Oh, I've got a guy. Sherry, when, when, when she tells the doctor this, I've got a guy, she says, I don't wanna to talk to your guy, I want you to explain it to me. Has that ever happened to y'all before? Mm -hmm. You gotta tell me, 
you need to tell me everything. You say, well, I guess I do. And three hours and 47 minutes later, you just got done with the greatest presentation of your entire life. I mean, you nailed all of it. You spelt Toco Trienols right. You know all the ingredients in HL5. You explain how much volume you got to have to be a triple black diamond. I mean, you did it all. And they get done. And what do they say? I'm out. For these reasons, I'm out. <gasps> I did a perfect presentation. Yeah, you took three hours, 47 minutes. So Sherry did not give in. I need you to explain it to me. Ma'am, that's not what I do. That's what sets us apart. We've got a system, a very unique system, where I'm not the expert for this, nor do I need to be. Well, then I'm not interested. You keep working three jobs, lady. Rock and roll. Some of y'all give in. I'll just tell this one person. Now what you've done is you wasted three hours and 47 minutes and they're still not going to join. So because Sherry did that, I was able to get in front of her. What did I do when I sat there? I went through all these steps again. I identified, I let her tell her story. I went through, I explained to her why this process, why this company is amazing and let her understand. So she had a check mark in the vehicle. She believed in it. Then she wanted to know about this awesome, awesome process that we have. And so I explained it to her. I gave her everything right down the list here. And then she got it. She was catching on. This is my part to do. Y'all don't do this. Y'all don't have to do this. This is what we do. This is what the Jade Factory system does. This is what all the leaders do. You don't have to do this part. But I'm telling you why, if you don't follow the system correctly, why it doesn't work. If you follow the system and you don't tell her the whole thing and you say, I've got somebody that you're going to need to speak to that's an expert, that's how we do this thing. If you'll do it that way, then when I get there and I get done doing my part, she goes, yeah, but this all looks good. And that's how you know that you've gotten past this, gotten past this. They kind of get the system. And this is where all of the objections hang out. Whatever comes after the word but at this point, sometimes the but comes out over here, right? I have desire, but there I don't have something to be able to help me get there. But what we've done here is we've gotten a check mark here, we got a check mark here, we got a check mark here, and now we're stuck on time. This all looks good, but I don't have time. How am I going to be able to do all this? They haven't connected the dots. It's like, look, we just went through this. How long did Sherry spend talking to you? Oh, well, not long at all. And then all of a sudden, <gasps> light bulb, they get it. Because Sherry followed the system, Sherry did not sit there and spend three hours and 47 minutes. I, I can spend three hours and 47 minutes with her because she's going to realize she doesn't have to do that. That's why it's so important that it goes this way. So Eddie asked a question about what happens when they start saying they don't have time. Sometimes, that, first off, Eddie, does this make sense? And now let me open it to everybody. Does anybody have any questions about that part that I just said or anything they want to uh, debate about or, or dig in on, just not quite clear on? It's not a negative thing. I, I'm, I'm, I want you to engage me if you don't believe it. Because if I don't hear anything, I'm going to make a big assumption that y'all get it. If you don't, it's incumbent upon you to ask. Because if you don't get it, help your neighbor who doesn't have uh, uh, the ability or the desire to get in front of everybody says, I don't understand what you're saying. So help them out too. Because if you don't get it, somebody else doesn't get it. All right. So we'll say that everybody gets it. Sometimes when you're going through these steps, you wave at them. That's easy. You say hi. That's easy. You're forming them. And then you find out the thing, right? And then when you get past the thing, you said, man, I'm sorry to hear that you're dealing with that empathy. How long have you been dealing with that empathy? What are you doing to address that empathy? Well, I'm doing this, that, that, this, 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 that, that, that. And you, typically right there, when you say, what are you doing to address that? They're going to give you an objection. There's going to be an objection right here. So 
let me blow this out. So how you been doing? Been doing good. How's the family? Family's good. How's your family? Family's good. How's job? Oh, the job freaking sucks, dude. I'm working three jobs right now. Oh, sounds like a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. I'm sorry you're dealing with that. How long have you been dealing with that? What are you doing to address that? Well, I'm a very unique human being in the fact that I have the following things going wrong in my life and it's not my fault and so therefore the world's against me and I cannot possibly get out of this hole that I am in right now. Everything they say right there fits into that category. When that happens, what you say is, I get it. I hear you and I know how I can feel that way. But what if there was a way that you could get out of that hole. I can't get out of that hole. You don't understand my situation is unique, Casey. I am very special on this planet of 8 billion people. This only happens to me and there's no examples on the planet in the history of mankind of anybody pulling themselves out of this type of hole. Anybody ever experienced that with anybody? Has anybody been that person? Come on now, get those hands up, you lying bunch of, okay. <laughs> We've all done it, so don't get all high and mighty that this person's got a thing, you've all been there, me too. So have a little grace with them. Say, look, I know how it feels to be in that spot. They need to be understood, you need to let them, let them you need to feel them. And then you need to separate that and say, look, have you tried this thing? What is it, have you ever heard of Kayani? Oh, I've heard all about that. Have you actually done it? Well, no, I've got a sister, brother's cousin's nephew down the street that picked up the garbage for that guy who he did it and he went to jail. So therefore everybody does Kayani going to jail. You're going to get this. I'm not just, I'm not making these things up. This all has happened. <laughs> People will come up with some really unique things to justify why they haven't been able to get out of the hole. You just need to find out is there a big enough desire with them that they're willing to do it and say, look, I understand that all happened. That sucks. But do you have a desire to get out of this thing? If you do, there are ways. Only if you're interested in seeing it or do you want to keep holding on to those issues? Some people want to hold on to them. Mr. Pinso had a great statement. Some people will hold on to that shit like it's a gold bar. <laughs> And that's truth. And when they do, you say, you keep holding on to that, it's gonna take you straight to the bottom. It's like a lead brick. Until you let go of that, you're gonna be stuck. And that's okay. That's their choice. So do you see where they can have that time problem that shows up there? When you're doing empathy, then they'll start saying, yeah, but I don't have any time to do this. Who said anything about time? I just asked you to talk to the guy. Well, I don't have time to do a business. No, you're saying no to something you think. Why is it? And ask him questions. Why do you think you don't have time to do this? That's a really good question. Instead of saying you do have time to do this, blah, 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 now you're fighting them. Ask them. Get them to tell you. Don't try to convince them until you know what the problem is. Why do you think you don't have time? That's a very powerful statement. Why do you think you don't have the resource that you need to be able to do this. So let me make another observation here is these five steps are designed to put a check mark in each of these boxes for your prospect. By going through these steps, it is designed to give them the check boxes they need in all four boxes so that they're gonna take action. They're either gonna be a customer, they're gonna be a business partner, or they're gonna be both. When you're forming them, you're doing it to find their thing, their desire. <laughs> then you wanna find out, do they have a vehicle? Nope, they ain't got a vehicle, okay? What if we had a vehicle? Permission. 
Well, if you had a vehicle, that can do that. Okay. What do you got? I got a guy that'll explain that vehicle to you. That's all you're doing in the setup is to be able to put these check marks in there. When you pass it to your team member, their job is to finish that out. When I got in here with Dr. Vargas, I, I had to figure out the desired part. Sherry had a good idea. I confirmed it. I had to let her know that this vehicle was sound. I had to let her know that she knows already how to do these steps because she's a human being and she's talked to somebody in a grocery store before. And then once I got past that, then I was able to get into, she have all the resources. That's what we're doing here. Okay. Something else, any questions on that before I move on? Mr. Blacknell, does that answer your question, sir? Head going up and I got a thumbs up, cool. Anybody got any questions on what I just went over there? Okay. Here's something else that I, uh, that I shared with Lane and, and I thought about it and I wanted to share it with you all. There's a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And there's something called, it was written by a guy named Robert Kiyosaki. And he has something called the cash flow quadrant. This was a book that I read that set me on the path for looking for residual income and one of the most impactful books that I've read on my journey. Now, some people think Robert Kiyosaki might be a little bit Looney Tunes, and I tend to agree with their assessment sometimes as a person, but there's no denying that he nailed this main concept that he's most very well known for. And yes, he's got all kinds of videos on there. There's a game called uh, Cash Flow, and it's one of the best games for simulating how to get out of the rat race. And it teaches about residual income. And that's when I first figured that out. So most people, let me draw out what these things. E stands for employee. Okay. S stands for self-employed. B stands for business owner. And I stands for investor. Most people, 95% of the population, maybe 97% of the population exist here. Somebody signs the front of your check. You sign the back of the check. Right? Some of you are crazy enough to go do this and you're gonna go start your own business. This is where you sign the front of the check and other people sign the back of the check. And if there's anything left at the end of the month, you get to keep that, if there's anything left. This is when you hear people say, you don't own a business, a business owns you, that's self-employed. That was my parents. My dad refused to be an employee, he hated people telling him what to do, so what he decided to do is go get a business where he could be self-employed and he could own a business, which was a misnomer. He did not own his business. He actually was being told what to do by all of his customers. <laughs> so he didn't just have one boss. He had a boss every time somebody walked through the front door. This is the one where you have to make rent. You have to pay electricity. You got to pay for insurance. You got to pay for uh, labor. You got to pay for water. You got to pay for machinery. You got to pay for uh, machinery breaking down, you got to fix it, you got to buy inventory, you got to do all these different things. Hopefully, somebody doesn't mess up in the shop. And when it's all said and done, when you get done paying everybody else, hopefully, you actually made a little bit of money and you didn't work 18 hours a day for the last 20 years. But that's typically what happens at self employed. And some people hate this so much that they'll do this. I looked at this and I said, I don't want to do either one of those things. I didn't want to do this, so I went this route. Because all I knew was watching my parents do this for self-employed, I'm like, man, that doesn't look all that much fun. Let's go work in a corporation. Let me go get a degree. This will be fun. Let me deal with politics for the next 21 years. That'll be great. <laughs> So when I was sitting there in traffic going, there's got to be another way 
I read a little book and it says, there sure is. You've only been looking at half the equation. I say, well, my parents were business owners. No, they weren't. They were self-employed. What's a business owner? A business owner is somebody that does not have to be there. Have you ever been to a Panera Bread before? If you've been to Panera Bread, chances are you have not yet met the business owner because he is not sweeping, he is not making paninis, and he sure as hell is not making you a nice coffee. He is on a beach in Jamaica right now having a good time. All right, that's a business owner. Now to do that, it requires a lot of things, specifically people and a process. Those words sound familiar, don't they? So if you've got people and you got a process, now you got something. Now, before I dig into that, let me finish off and get my main point. The other option, the other quadrant is investor. Business owner, most of the time people think about business owner and it takes money to be able to open your own business. You got to go out and you got to pay for all that stuff that I was talking about over here. Plus you got to have even more labor because you got to have a bunch of people that are working this for you so that somebody's watching over everything and you can go do something else. And then you just check in on your business. You look at the reports, you do a spot check every once in a while. That's the idea. So you got to have some money to be able to pull that off. Then once you get to that point, then you say, you know what? I'd like to, I got the money. Now I want my money making money before you had to have processes and people. But then what you want to do is you want to get into the investor side where you're sending money to these business owners to invest in their business and they go find the people and they go find the processes. And all you're doing is investing in it. To do that money, you got to have money to make money in the investor line. Now you can go have a little bit of money and you make a little bit of percentage, but if you got a big pile of money, you only need a little bit of percentage to do pretty darn well. But you gotta have money to get this one. So, in walks in network marketing, AKA MLM. What if you could partner with some billionaires that have figured out the processes and figured out the people and they came up with the product and they handle logistics and they do websites, they do IT, they do product, uh, design, they come out with products that actually freaking change people's lives, and they do this in a global networking marketed uh, business that is literally doing this in 60 plus countries, 40 different languages. Imagine the payroll alone, imagine just being an accountant for all of that, and you don't have to do any of those things, and you get to partner in with somebody. That sounds pretty damn good. Now, when you get on this side of the equation over here and you're talking to people that are in this side, and by the way, y'all are all business owners. Now, I am going to kick you right in the teeth here for a few of you. Some of y'all aren't acting like business owners. You're acting like hobbyists. You're acting like you picked up a golf club for the first time and you're going to go try this thing out on the weekends at the driving range. My job that I've taken on myself is I want to turn y'all all into professionals. I want you to see it. I want you to act it. And I want to give you the skills to be able to be a true force to be reckoned with. And I've done it. Not like I can do it. It's I have done it. And I'm trying to do that with you all. But when you're over on this side and you're talking to people on this side, you will hear things like, well, why do I have to pay any money to get started in this business? This is when you pick up a two before and you smack them in the head and you draw out this little quadrant and say, look, Skippy, you can keep being an employee and be a slave to somebody for the rest of your life. And if that's what you want to do, you keep doing that. I'll call you when I need some employees. Now, if they're doing as if asking a true question and not just being obstinate, then you say, very good question. Here's why. Because if you're going to go make money in this world, you're going to have to have a business to be able to do that. And unless you are some savant that knows how to be able to create the next Apple or Google or something along those lines, you sure don't probably know all the things that go into the logistics 
You've never actually signed the front of a check. You've only cashed them. You don't know what it means to make a payroll. And you probably don't want to go through the very expensive education that it's going to take to be a successful business owner. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you a very, very cool opportunity called network marketing where you don't have to do all those things. You just need to come up with a very special skill set. And that skill set is five steps. And two of them is waving and saying hi. Have you been to a grocery store before? Cool. You can do this business. You want to talk to my guy? Yeah. What do you got? This sounds different. Because they don't want to be here anymore. But they will hold on to that lead brick that's sinking them because they want to keep holding on to it because they don't know any different. Here's the deal. If people don't have, it takes courage, just so everybody knows, to go from this side to this side. Courage. That's really all it comes down to. I talk about it. You got to have, you got to be hungry and you got to have coachability. But really it comes down, do you have courage? Do you want to do that? If you don't, stop trying to get these people out of this area and move them to another quadrant. They don't want to. Some people will hold on to the fear of change more. I, I don't know if I'm going to get the phrase just right, but it was something along the lines on, I don't, I fear not changing more than I fear the change. I want things to be different. Therefore, I'm willing to go through that. Some people don't want to. They fear change more than they fear the success, the lack of success. So when somebody's over here saying, why do I have to pay money? I was like, do you understand how business works? Ask them another question back. Don't sit there and try to whitewash it and try to make it all just pretty and everything. Smack them with it. Say, look, man, you want to be an employee. Keep being an employee. I thought you wanted to get out of that. Because if you think you're going to get out of that and this is going to be a job, this ain't a job. We're building a business here. Now, what you think it takes to build a business is probably way off because you think it requires a whole bunch of other stuff. In this model, it does not. It requires you being able to do five steps. So that's a, another thing that came out today that I wanted to share with everybody is that you want to make sure you're operating over here as a business owner. Okay, let's open it up for some more questions. Does this make sense to everybody? Anybody completely lost? Like, hey, I don't know what the hell this E and this S and this B and this I stuff is. You lost me, man. What, what is this? Anything? Or is everybody completely tracking on this? Good? Okay. All right. Give me some examples because last I checked, nobody promoted today. Thank Give you me some questions. What you got? Uh, I talked to this lady. We waved to each other and all this stuff. And it's been going on back and forth. <laughs> and I went ahead and said, oh, your kids look adorable, blah, 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 and all this stuff. You hit the mute button, Ava, on the blah, 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 blah part. Ava, you're still muted. All right, pick up from blah, 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 blah. Your, cutes are ador your kids are adorable. Okay, your kids are adorable. And uh, I said, I used to work in the post office. Mm -hmm. She said, no, I had to retire on disability. I'm going to go look for something easier to do. I still have 20 years to go. I said, I need a job. If you know of any, I have a back injury, so I need something light. So when I said, oh, I'm so sorry about your back. Very nice. We do, have, uh, we do have a job that you can do from home. You send an app from your phone and work from home. Okay. All right. And I said, we are promoting a set of holistic products that can help people with different health difficulty like yours with your back. Mm -hmm. And I said, but I said, I, I have a guy that can help. Do you want to fix that? Is there something that interests you? That was it. I didn't hear anything. I guess she wants a job instead. <laughs> yes. Cool. Okay. So 
in that respect, um, now just a matter of waiting for her to call me back. Do I encourage her at this point to do anything? Uh, you need an answer. You're looking for an answer from her. And so something happened, she got busy or she read that and it reminded her of something that she didn't want to do. Who knows what goes on in people's heads. And so what I would do is I would re-engage her and, you know, whenever you think about her next and just say, Hey, I just want to check in on you. I sent you that last question. What, what, uh, what was your thoughts? And see what, uh, see what happens on that. The biggest thing is don't tell a story. Don't fill in. Don't sit there starting to extrapolate and guess and, and assume what went on unless you know what went on. No. Sit there and come back. She probably got busy. Who knows? I don't know. It could be a thousand things. Mm. So what happens on that though is our brain starts messing with us where we start filling in the blanks because of what happened in my past with this one person that was kind of like this and I've got this negative thought in my head. Now I start thinking all this negative stuff. Don't do that. Mm. Just get back to her and say, Hey, did you get my message? What happens is we get so, this happens a lot. We get so tuned in and we're so expectant of the result being what we want it to be that when it doesn't go that way, we're too emotionally invested in the outcome. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a difference in not having a desire that somebody, I have a desire that everybody I speak with is going to join the organization and get on the product. That's how I am. That's my desire. Now, the other side of me knows that that's probably not going to be the way it goes because everybody's got different desires. Their desire and my desire are not always going to line up, right? Mm -hmm. I might like Fords. Somebody else might like Chevys. Yeah, it, yeah. it didn't line up, mm -hmm. right? And so it doesn't mean I'm not going to be emotionally – if this person doesn't like Fords, I'm good with it. I don't need you to like Fords for me to like Fords. If you like Chevys, like Chevys, man. Cool. Mm -hmm. So don't worry what they're going to do. If you will go with that approach, again, I have the desire. I do desire them to be in. But if they don't, I promise you, <laughs> I am going to be so good sleeping the night. Mm -hmm. Because I do not have control over that. I can try to influence it. That's another thing I want to bring up right now is sometimes we're going to give up too easy also. And when I say give up, I say give up on getting them to understand. We allow them to go with that pair of glasses that they have that's looking at something and they have, they're not saying no to what we do. They're saying no to what they think looking through their glasses that they're going to have. And we just go, well, I guess they're not interested. No, that's not the case. You didn't get to the root of the problem. The root of the problem is that their glasses got smudges on them and they're not looking at this thing the way we need them to look at it. So what I do from where I can try to influence their decision is I try to take those glasses off, put them on the ground, take a hammer to them and step on them and stomp on them and then hand them a new pair. What most people try to do is they try to go over there and make the person wrong because they've got the wrong glasses on. Like, You're an idiot that you don't get to. No, they got bad glasses. Take the glasses off and give them some new glasses. Well, I've been telling them all this information. No, ask them questions. Why do you think that? She comes back, says, who knows what she comes up with? Don't get so emotionally into it. We're like, well, I guess you just don't want to do it. And then you're frustrated. You go, hey, you know what, let me see if I can influence your thinking on this. Why do you think that? And try to lead them down a path to see things differently. So the answer to it, Ava, is when do you think it's going to be good for you to reach back out to them? Well, um, I talked to her. No, 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 no. This is a simpler, simpler question. Uh -huh. When do you think it'd be a good time for you to reach back out to her? Tomorrow. There's your answer. Tomorrow it is. Mm -hmm. See how easy that is? Mm -hmm. Now you've created what you're going to do. And that's what you're going to do. Does that mean tomorrow she's going to join? No. Good, good. There, there you go. 
we're going to find out. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate it. Absolutely. You're welcome. I love the question. Um, that stirred up one more thought and it's about to leave me. <laughs> oh, observations throughout the week of talking to a bunch of you all and people that are not here as well. I want to share this because you, you spurred it up. When people ask a question, be present to the question that they are asking. I watch conversations differently, I guess, than other people, and I'm tuned into it differently, I guess, but it's fascinating to watch interactions. When somebody asks a question, the other person is answering something that is nowhere near the question that was asked. To improve your communication, and as the only way that we've got right now to talk to other people is talk to them. The way to get our thoughts into their heads is typically by speech. When you're interacting with somebody, if you find that you're talking more than you're asking, the chances are you are answering questions that have not been asked. If I'm, on a, I'm going to use you as a use case for what just happened. I asked, when are you going to reach out to them? You were getting ready to tell me a whole bunch of other stuff. You might have eventually got to where the question was, but you didn't answer that question. You're answering some other question or some other thought that was in your head. Be, be aware of that. When people are talking, slow down and, and truly, I mean, I literally asked myself, what was the question that they just asked me? Because I'm getting ready to say a bunch of stuff. Am I getting ready to answer their question? Or am I getting ready to tell them a whole bunch of other stuff that I wanted to share? Answer their question. Now, if you, after you answer their question, see if there's anything else. Otherwise, you're making it about you. I want to tell you all these things that are going on. And I'll be honest with you. I asked a question. I'm kind of in the lead here on asking the question. Why don't you answer my question? Because until you do, I'm really not paying any attention to all the stuff that you're talking about. Straight up, this is one of those where if somebody has spinach in their teeth, I'm going to show them and let them know, hey, you got spinach in your teeth. If you will address that, that this goes to all everybody, myself included, because I can always get better at this as well. Listen to the question and go a little slower. Your brains operate a whole lot faster than your lips do. You've already gotten a whole lot further, and that's where we start diverging from communicating with people. People ask me all the time, how do you get people into your business that fast? And I listen to what they ask and I give them what they're looking for. You all think that you're doing that too. Just make sure you are. That's a form of your terrorist that's jumping in. Say, well, I'm answering their question. You can't even repeat the question. So make sure you have that chat with yourself. Am I actually listening to what they ask me? That makes sense, everybody? Very cool. All right, who else got some questions? That was a good one, Ava, thank you. Who else? Bueller, Bueller. Some of y'all remember that movie. Okay, let's draw some more pictures. If you have a question that pops up in the middle of it, ask me. Desire, vehicle, internal resources, external resources. I've never done that before, but if you spell all that out, it's driver. And that is jacking with my head right now. Whoa. That's messed up. I've never done that before. I just put the letters. You unjumble that, it's driver. <laughs> Let it be known at 947 on June 27th, Casey had an aha. 
holy crap moment. <laughs> man, that's pretty cool. Okay. Oh, man, I love it when that happens. So this one right here. Who here feels that they might not have, oh, wait a second, we might have a question. If we've been forming someone and they say, don't want to fix that, and it's been 60 to 90 days and we're going back to them, should we just start over forming? Yes, absolutely. So question is, you've had a chat with somebody, you made it all the way to the thing where you've identified this is broken, and hey, do you want to fix that? And they go, nope, don't want to fix it, just want to vent. Cool. And now it's 60 to 90 days in the future. What do we do when we come back to have a discussion with them? You start over like you hadn't seen them in 60 to 90 days. You say, hey, have you been? Wave, say hi. And then you start back over on the forming. Absolutely. And go through the list again. How, and don't start off with their thing. Okay. If they didn't want to fix it before. Don't start off and get to it, but don't start off on it because otherwise they're going to think that you're just coming back to beat them up on that. Show interest in them on other areas. It'll come back. If it's still a thing, it'll come back up. They will talk about it again. They will bring it back up if it's still a thing. Jamie, does that uh, answer it or any follow up on that? Got it. Thanks. Cool. You are welcome. Thanks for the question. So on this picture that I was sharing, does anybody have any questions on the desire? Does everybody feel that they've got their desire completely nailed down? Anybody feel that they are not quite clear on what their desire is? Stephanie, you up for playing with me? Let's see if you can get unmuted there. Okay, I'm here. Awesome. So everybody, Stephanie is a guest. She has not, well, I don't know. Last we talked, I guess was last Thursday. You attended Power Hour. You're thinking about joining the business. Somebody had mentioned that, uh, hey, Casey's in Houston. You might want to listen in on some of the stuff he's talking about. You joined us and you're back again. Have you joined yet or do you still check no. this out? I'm still checking it out. Perfect. So are you good with playing along with me on uh, the desire side? Yes. Cool. So I want to give you guys an idea on how I do this part. So, Stephanie, what, what's the reason that you decided to take a look at this and are investigating this? What's the driver for that for you? The product itself, and um, I love working with people and meeting people, and I have the desire to, um, I guess, accumulate wealth. Cool. And, um, I'm, oh, go ahead. What else? And... Um, I'm an advocate for health. You're an advocate for health? Yes. I love it. I love it. Um, why, why do you have that desire for wealth? Because I want to become um, self-sufficient. I would okay. like to be my own boss. That's nice. Yes. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't want to work for anybody anymore. I don't want to uh, work for anyone anymore. And I'll, that's a three-day conversation. So I love it. No, it's powerful. It's powerful. Why? Why? Why is it important to you to have that freedom? Because um, I guess when I think about it, um, I guess when I think about the form, the family, the motivation, you know, all those 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 concepts, I would have. I would like to have that freedom to spend more time with my family and yeah. have that financial freedom to, to help my family and to help the community. I like that. Why is it important to you to be able to help your family? Well, that's a good question. Um, well, um, I guess um, it's a need. It's always something that I've always done since I was a kid. I'm the oldest. Um, I would like to see not only in myself, um, when I think about retirement, that, that was something that I always feared, always had a desire to, um, I always worried about my retirement, even though I'm still young. Um, I didn't think about it so much when I was, you know, a lot younger in my young adult years, but now that I'm getting a little older, I worry about that quite a bit. 
why is it important to you to uh, to have that for retirement? Uh, um, well, <laughs> you're doing great. Um, uh, thank you. Um, I guess because I had an experience with a, an immediate family member a few years ago, and this person didn't have the resources to take care of themselves, and I started thinking about that. Uh, about myself and my family and how um, it's important to have those resources as you get older. And so I think it's important to have that financial freedom, um, that independence. I think it goes a long way with, with like your happiness. Lots of things. Now you're touching it. Okay, thank you. You feel the difference? Yes. You feel how everything everything you told me was 100% truthful, honest, factual, but it wasn't until that very last one, and you almost didn't go there, and you held off, and then you went for it. And then when you, when you touch that nerve, when you touch that copper wire that's plugged into the wall, then you feel it because it was a feeling. And it's right. the, the, the ability to have that, happiness for your family right. and thinking of, a, of an instance where that wasn't the case for someone else. And you said, how would I feel if I was in that situation? Exactly. Empathy. Yes. Yes. It, it's absolutely a form of empathy when our brain looks at it and goes, man, that could have happened to me. And where would I be? And what am I doing about that? I had that. It's, it's actually, I think it's got a special word. It's called an epiphany. Exactly. Because you'll go through empathy to get to the epiphany when you're sitting, me sitting in traffic going, I'm sitting in traffic more than I'm seeing my kids. And for two days in a row, I'm next to this crazy guy in this white car who is absolutely losing his marbles on his freaking steering wheel as he's stuck in traffic. Do I want to do this for 20 more years? And I had my epiphany and I decided I do not. And when I got spending in, a, what were you saying? Spend, spending that quality time with your family members. That's it. Not anything valuable than that. And, and it's not just the spending the quality time of, that's not the true thing. It's the feeling I get when I've been able to provide the happy right. time. It's the feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's always the thing. It's got to be the feeling. So what you exactly. just got a hold of right there is your desire. Now, do you remember any of the questions I asked you as we were going through that process? Can you repeat no. back? I, I don't remember. Uh, just like why do I feel like that is important to have that desire? Do you know how many different questions I asked you going through that? I think you asked me two questions, two or three questions. I asked you the same question every you time. You did? We did about six of them, I think. So I'm doing that for everybody else to be able to see how this works because when you were going through it, you were going through your brain, you were playing the video in your brain and eventually it hit the emotional part. You got out of your head, you got into your heart and then it was a feeling that took over. It wasn't a picture anymore. I understand now. That's how it goes. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for playing and sharing. That's not an easy thing to do in front of a bunch of random strangers. But it's extremely powerful, and I want everybody to understand that's how you go about having a real conversation. Got it. Because you might remember some of your conversations today, but you're definitely going to remember that conversation for a long time. That's what we have the ability to do by simply asking a silly phrase of, why is that important to you? See how powerful a conversation can be? Yes, I do. I understand that now. That's cool. When you have the ability to do that, which everybody does possess, now it's a choice if you're going to go out and do that. It's, that's cool. That's a cool thing. Now, when you do that to somebody else, guess what? Now you're making an impact. Now you're starting a process for them to see. So when you're making your decision on is this going to be something you're going to do 
you now see the reason why you're doing it. And when you see the reason why you're doing it and you have a vehicle and you have a process and you've got all the things you need, you have a burning desire that is very clear to you, maybe more clear than it's been clear in a while. And it's filling you up. And when that's a hot enough desire, guess what? You go do stuff. So let me ask you just to finish this all off. Do you see everything on the business side so far? Do you understand Kayani and what it does product wise, business wise? How do you feel about this whole thing right now? I think it's a, a, an exciting opportunity. Excellent. I'd say that's a check mark in the second box. Do you understand the process? Do you know theoretically how to drive this vehicle? To some degree, I do. Okay. So then let's get to why you haven't joined yet. Okay. What would you say that is? I would say my finances. Perfect. We talked about that one earlier. It's either time, money. So on the money side, is it something that you've got a plan to be able to get that money to do this? Or do you see a way to actually reach that? Um, ask me that one more time. I'm yeah, no, good question. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you saying that. Do you have a plan on how to be able to get the money portion to do this? Yes, I do. Cool. What's your timeline on being able to execute that plan? I would say uh, before the, okay, because we're what, in the sixth month, one to the seventh month this year. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would say before this year is over, before this year is up. Gotcha. Next so couple next, of months. Next couple of months. Very good. Very good. Which package are you looking at doing? I was just thinking about starting off with the six hundred. Is it six hundred dollars? Is that the? Uh -huh. Yep, five ninety. Yep, five ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very good. Awesome. How much money do you see wanting to make in this business? What's the first thing that you look at and say, "I can make that amount of money"? What's that amount for you? I was looking at the chart, mm -hmm. and I kept my eyes kept. I guess kept focusing on I guess the pearl status I believe six hundred and fifty nine dollars I think that's the, one. that's the one yep that's the pearl one very good or, or was it diamond it's either pearl or diamond diamond is fourteen thousand a month it was those two well that's a big difference which one which one does it for you six hundred and fifty nine or fourteen thousand I think it was I think it was I think it was diamond diamond excellent I like it how many, how many, how many, it, once, once you are ready to jump on board, how many months are you willing to work at the, let, let's do it this way, how many hours a week or how many hours a day are you willing to put into this to be able to make an extra $14,000 a month? That's a good question. Um, because right now I'm working part time. Mm -hmm. in, in order for me to buy in, I have to think about, I'm going to have to work a little bit more hours mm -hmm. to gather up the income to pay into it. To Let, me the money to pay into it. Let me show you something that's very, very interesting. You're going to like okay. everybody's, everybody's getting a, uh, getting an example of how this process goes. So $599. Stephanie, I'm pretty sure I know the answer. I know you just moved and everything else, but did you bring this with you? When you came to Houston, you got one of these? Was it a phone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I see it now. Yes, a cell phone. Yes, sir. <laughs> you got one I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm having fun. If you take this right now and you go into your kitchen and you put it in the dishwasher and you start your dishwasher up in about 75 minutes, will this phone still operate? Yes. It will? <laughs> you got a waterproof one? I like it. I have What's that? Let's have a better example. Go outside and throw this on the concrete real hard. <laughs> if you broke okay. this thing, you'd be without a phone. Exactly. How long until you go down to Best Buy or Walmart or wherever it is you get a phone and, until you go get a new phone? Probably the next day. How much does one of these phones cost? Depends on what you get. I know they, they're, they're more than 
let's say that you found a phone that was five hundred ninety nine dollars. Okay. So if you broke your phone by the weekend, you'd have a new one. Now, where did that five ninety nine come from? Out of my checking account, banking account. Interesting. Have you ever seen people get these phones and then they have like a little payment plan that they do where they didn't want to be out the 600 bucks, but they'll do a little payment plan? The, the track phone? Mm -hmm. Yep, they'll do that sort of thing. Uh, and other, other instances I'm talking about, when I got my phone, I didn't want to spend a $1,000 out of hand and give it to them. I just rolled it into my plan and they let me pay right. my phone. I think it's what, 30 bucks a month or something like that? Yes. Yes, thirty-two dollars a month, or or they have the prepaid phones with the little cards. So. Yeah, a couple of different options, and you even said you could go out and just put it up, pull it out of your checking account. Right. Now let's just use the checking account, and then I'm going to show you a secondary option. But let's take this one for instance. You remember what that desire was that we just touched on a little bit ago? Yes. That's a pretty powerful desire, huh? Yes. But that desire isn't enough for you to go into your checking account and pull five ninety nine out, is it? Or is it? Good question. <laughs> That's a damn good question, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Because what's that phone going to do for you? Here's what it's going to do for you. There is a drug that goes through our bodies called dopamine. And when this little thing goes ding, and we look at it, we get a little bump of dopamine going, somebody sent me something, there's a notification, I need to light this thing up, burn my retinas and see who it is that's telling me about their cat today. But we do it because there's a reaction. The reason I went through the why with you is I just caused a pretty tremendous amount of drugs to dump in your system when you started thinking about that feeling and that hardcore feeling of what it's gonna feel like when you don't ever have to be in that position that that other person was in. Exactly. That's why we got to figure out that desire. Because when I do that, guess what? The, the resource, the external resource, you weren't quite sure that you had enough of. All of a sudden, you might have enough of it if it's a phone. If we're just looking at Kayani, we just want to make money. We don't think about it that way. But when I get you to feel that feeling, now all of a sudden, I asked a good question. See how that works? Yes. Now here's the next thing. How much is that phone making you per month right now? Wait a second, it's not making you no money? No, it's not making me any money. Huh, so that's just $30 in the hole. And there's no positive that's going with that one. Now let's go over here and let's look at what it takes to be a Jade in the company. Follow the system, get a couple customers, find a couple people that understand this whole thing, and we work our way up and we get you to Jade, and that's two hundred and ninety-eight dollars a month. Now, how much would you have to do if you put this on a little payment plan? Interesting, huh? Yes. So what's neat about this is when you get started in this, you can actually do what's called a business loan. And a business loan is you get Uncle MasterCard or Aunt Visa to spot you. Now, it doesn't make, I'm not a big fan of using credit cards to go out and buy uh, things that don't make you money. Robert Kiyosaki calls those doodads. Doodads are things that cost you money. They don't make you money. Assets, also known as, these are also known as liabilities, by the way. Your car, liability. Rent, liability. Cell phone bill, liability. Business, asset. Why? Because it makes you money. Right? Right. So if I can tell you about a really special blackjack table in Las Vegas, that if you show up and you put $30 on it and you make 298, how much money do you pack in a suitcase and we go to Vegas? 
So then it comes down to, but can I do this? Can I make $298? You understand how this system works. This is what you do. So can you get to there? Yes, you can. So that's the way I want you to think about it as you move forward is if you broke your phone, you'd have one by tomorrow. If you want to hit your desires, because right now you don't have another vehicle that's going to help you do that desire, do you? So now you got some stuff to be able to sort out and mull over and think about, don't you? I do. Cool. If you want any more help on that, you want to dig into that anymore, let me know. Will do. Cool. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thank you for participating because you just helped a whole lot of people see how this process works. Now, here's the final thing for everybody. Y'all don't do that part. The factory does that part. What do y'all do? You pass the ball to the guy that knows how to do that or the team that he's assembled that knows how to do that. That's not your job because if you do that, then everybody else thinks they have to do that and they ain't got time to do that. Make sense? Sweet. All right. We went over, but that was fun. And I wanted to make sure Stephanie's joined us for two times. That means that's somebody that we need on the team. And Stephanie, the other benefit that you get is you get to hang out with us. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> I love it. All right, everybody, we're going to call it a night. Let's see a couple comments on there. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. All right, I'm going to unmute the line so y'all can say good night. And we will see y'all. Oh, 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 one last thing I wanted to mention. Make sure, I think I started off saying this, but make sure you go out. There's a, a promotion going on right now. That promotion for the product is the summer countdown, I think you get a lot of extra product that is a sampling pack, whatever. You can use that for yourself, especially in this 90-day uh, challenge that's coming up. Make sure you get signed up on that by Saturday. Make sure you submit all that if you're going to do it. Enter to win $10,000. That's kind of a no-brainer. But you can actually use this, and it'll take care of one of, your, uh, one of the purchases that you need to be able to do. So you're looking at about 150 points that you're going to get for about $175 for that price. If you bought all those products, it's over 225 bucks if I did the math right. So you're looking at saving yourself like $50 and you're getting some of the best bang for your QV, uh, buck for your QV, bang for your buck of any of the things that are out there. So get that, order that, have that, have that to be able to share, have that to be able to use yourself and make sure you got that stocked up so you can hand that to people that are wanting it. Somebody asked if we've got a regional scheduled. We do not have a regional scheduled. Uh, with me doing these four series of the training classes and the extra that that's adding onto my plate, uh, I have not scheduled a regional. I, I did look at that today just to see. I had a thought of when I would do one, but I haven't nailed that down. So uh, we don't have one just yet. I will be considering how we're going to do that. Um, and then we'll go from there. So no, no is the answer right now, uh, but it's not a, a done deal. And absolutely, you're, you're, I appreciate you asking the question. All right, everybody, I'm going to unmute the line so y'all can say good night, and we will see you at the next one. Make sure you get those products before the month ends. Make sure you get your points for being qualified, and that's a perfect way to do it. 150 points, you're qualified. That's a good way to do it, and then you can uh, offer that out. All right, everybody, have a good night. We will see you next time. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay. Well.